Whoop. Very nice. All right, welcome back to the bluegrass this beautiful October day, video four in our protection dog or scared dog series. Uh, Bella's been doing awesome. Remember the first week, uh, went out in the field, the chair, she had to go to pieces. Uh, second and third videos, what we did is we went out back and we did a lot of hiking, did some black lab therapy. And uh, now, listen, we've got her to where she's about mastered our exercise with small challenges course, which is where we teach our formal vocabulary and physical skills. Now we're gonna head up to Winchester and uh, see exactly what's going on in Chester Vegas and uh, desensitize this dog but before I go it's something that you guys have to think about whenever you talk about like socializing a dog especially dogs like uh, say this one or this one here uh, this dog's name is Mac Maxie and when she got to the kennel she acted just like Bella she wouldn't hardly come through the gate just bark 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 all of them do the same thing for all, like every video I say that all the haters they send me emails they get in the comments and they tell me what I don't know about these dogs that they like to talk about as protection dogs and guard dogs I know a bit guys okay I know that every time they come to my gate where there's 10 labs waiting to get in here and party they're up there hiding between their owner's legs barking at everybody okay I know that much right now so anyway so Bella's been pretty good but I thought to myself before I go it is fall lots of leaves are falling and there's lots of leaf pickup crews uh, out and the last thing I need is to be walking down the road and somebody pop out with a leaf blower and scare Bella and uh, you know her get run over or me get pulled down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk her on the course but I'm gonna walk her on the course after I start this leaf blower if I can get it started now you guys know <laughs> how hard it is to start two cycle anything What I'm gonna do is if it'll stay running, huh? If it'll stay running, I'll just set it over here. It'll bounce around and uh, we'll kind of walk. I just make sure that Bella is used to walking with that kind of noise. Easy, very nice. Oh, now for those of you who are familiar with your with my channel, so come on, Bella, you know what I'm doing here. I'm walking my exercise with small challenges course because that's where I teach my formal skills. My dog training uh, kennel is a giant Montessori and uh, what I try to do is shape the environment so that the environment shapes the dog, right? I have two broad categories of learning here, learning by doing, which is what we call informal training. That's the important stuff to me, you know, that's what's where we go out and, and I encourage the dog to make good choices and learn how to navigate the kind of things that pop up in real life. And then we have uh, what I consider formal training. And that's where we teach our vocabulary. We use a very simple vocabulary. Come, let's go, hup, easy, wait, and stay. Easy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, vocabulary is no good if the dog lacks the ability and presence to implement the vocabulary under a broad range of physical and psychological conditions. Wait. And so, you know, like some of the mistakes I've made in the past, and you guys are make if you're novices, is like, you know, a million times I've got to dog to where like it would perform really well here at the kennel is mastered the small challenges course and then I head up town to do something and I run into somebody their truck backfires they're uh, using a leaf blower using a chainsaw and uh, you know my whole day go to pieces so now I try to make sure that I cover those uh, eventualities before I head out you know basically what you have to understand about dog training is that you know listen there's levels to dog training okay and I mean that like in a lot of different ways but uh, in this particular instance what I'm saying is like for this dog to be able to perform because you remember she's naturally skeptical she's got a very low threshold at which she feels threatened okay for her to be able to go out and navigate an environment full of noises and smells and new people looking at her different ways because a lot of people have preconceived ideas about this kind of dog. They see the dog, they go, oh, that's a, well, the round here, what they call them, German police. That's a German police. And so they, you know, think the dog's going to bite them. So you know what it's like. You go out and if somebody's looking at you weird. You're like, hey, why is that person looking at me weird? I knew that they were going to get me. Stoney, we have come to yet another place in the world where all the people are trying to get us. I better start barking and chase them off, you know. And uh, like, so that's just all we're doing, guys, is we're just making sure before we head out, we've covered all our bases and we've at least put some thought into how we're going to deal with the various eventualities that we might uh, run into. Okay. Now, if you think for a second, that you're gonna go out in the fall 
and not run into a leaf blower, well, then you either live somewhere way down south or you just haven't thought about your dog training, okay? And that's where most of dog training goes wrong is you just don't think about what's likely to happen. We all have kind of a, in our dog training, we have a, a, like a, a bias towards optimism, okay? I call it the watch this problem in dog training. Like you're sitting at home and you're working on sit or down or roll over or house manners or whatever, and then your company comes over and you're like, hey, watch this and it never works. I mean, that's the hardest thing in the dog business is the watch this problem, okay? But, all right, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna go uptown and I'm gonna let you guys in on a little theory of dog training I developed a few years ago and I call it the bomb theory of dog training. I'll explain to you what that is when we get uptown. All right, guys, we made it up to the world famous Rural King in Winchester, Kentucky, and I'm going to expound on my bomb theory of dog training. Now, before you sensitive commenters get to work, telling me I shouldn't use that word, at least understand why I use that word before you start typing, okay? When I was a young child, I knew an old man, and he told me about growing up poor in Kentucky. And uh, one of the things that stuck with me is he said when he was about George's age, 15, there wasn't any work, so he had to hit the road looking for work. He said while he was on the road, he said a traveling man always runs into three classes of people. Hobos, tramps, and bums, okay? Now what a hobo is, is a migrant worker. He's a fella, he's out on the road, he's looking for work so he can make some money and take it home to his family. Now what a tramp is, a guy that's on the road, and uh, he might hang out with hobos, but his primary interest isn't taking money home to his family, it's just adventure, and so he would work whenever he ran out of liquor. He said, but the class that you had to work really hard to avoid was the bum class, right? He said, the way to tell a bum from a hobo is uh, by the sign they hold up, right? So show them what a hobo sign says, George. Look at this, guys. Come up here. If you don't believe me, go look in any of the Great Depression theories, uh, uh, pictures that you can find on the internet. They're all holding up uh, signs that says, we'll work for food. Okay, and I'm all about that, because if George and I fell on hard times, what would we be, George? Hobos. Hobos. We would go out, we'd make some money, we'd bring it home to our family. But we're not judgmental, so if we had some tramps along the way that were just out for adventure, would we judge them? Not really. Not really. Not as long as they worked, didn't get into our money, right? But who would we judge? The bums. The bums, because show them what the sign the bums hold up. Look, guys, this is a bum sign. See? It says, give me something for free. In other words, you and George go work, and when y'all get back to camp, you give us some of your hard-earned work because we won't work, right? And uh, so we can take off walking now. But so, like, that always stuck with me. And when I moved to Lexington, I'm from a rural county, so, you know, I, I, everybody's kind of poor, so I didn't, nobody stood on a, on, a, on, a, on a corner and said, hey, I got a sign that says I'm poor, because it wouldn't have stood out any, right? Everybody was poor. But I got to Lexington, like I kept seeing people uh, like at Lowe's or Home Depot or on the corner and they would have a sign. It would be some version of give me something for free. You know, they were out of gas or their car was broken down or whatever. And I always used to try to like pitch in. I'd give them $2, $5, $10, just whatever I had. Well, the problem is, is, uh, you know, I kind of got to where I saw those same people all over town, you know. So they'd be at the Lowe's on Winchester Road one day, and then they'd be at the Lowe's on Richmond Road the next day. And I'm all over town, because I'm a dog trainer, I had a van, I'd drive around, train dogs. And I started to realize that they were just bums, right? They weren't hobos, they weren't out looking for work, and they weren't tramps, they weren't even willing to work to fuel their drug or alcohol addiction, right? They were just straight up bums. And so I kind of de developed a dislike for them. And uh, then a kind of a crazy trend started happening with the bums. They all got dogs, right? So like I would be coming out of the lows and there would be a bum that I had learned to kind of ignore, but he would have a dog. And I was like, well, I'm very interested because back then uh, I was like, well, hey, what kind of dog training are you doing? You know, because I was, you know, there's, you kind of go through stages in dog training where you think like dog training is about this theory or that theory or this technique or that technique. Uh, and so I would go up to them and I'd be like, hey, what kind of dog trainer are you doing? Are you a plus R trainer? Are you clicking and treating a bunch? Of course, bums ain't doing any clicking and treating. So then I'd say, well, oh, okay, you must be uh, like an electric collar trainer. Are you doing electric collar training? And they're like, electric collar? If I had that much money, then uh, I wouldn't be standing out here. I'd be laid over in a ditch uh, drinking, right? Okay, so if they're not plus R trainers and they're not electric collar trainers, what were they doing that made the dogs behave so well? And after a while, I figured it out, right? 
What they were doing is a process known as desensitization via progressive exposure, right? Okay. And uh, like I used to like to use big terms whenever I was doing my dog training because I thought it made me sound smart. And so I would have clients uh, come down to my place and I would tell them stuff. And then the next week when they come down, I would ask them questions, right? And so one of the things, like when we were working with dogs that were a little bit skeptical, like Bella, uh, you know, I would ask them, I'd say, hey, can you explain the concept of uh, desensitization via progressive exposure? And they would all stumble and couldn't, you know, they couldn't, just couldn't remember it, right? It didn't roll off the tongue. And so I started calling it bum training, right? And when I started calling it bum training, uh, you can't unhear bum training, can you? Like, I really try my best to use what are known as mnemonic devices in my training. I try to put little funny words or sayings with, uh, you know, relatively complicated principles. It just makes them easy to remember, right? And bum training is one of those easy things. So what am I doing with Bella? You know, I took her, you know, I took her into my kennel. I put her around a lot of dogs. We did a lot of outdoor adventures. And I taught her a vocabulary. Then I made sure she was able to, uh, you know, do the vocabulary on my small challenges course. And then, you know, it's time to bring her out into the real world. Now, I knew, I always know, my compliance rate when I get out into the real world is going to be lower than my compliance rate at the kennel, right? So do I get upset about it? Do I get worried about it? Do I give the dog time about it? No. I just go out and I act like a bum. And what's a bum really able to do? This is remarkable to me. But a bum is able to go out into the world and not care what people think about them. They don't get embarrassed asking you for money. They don't uh, have any pride, so it doesn't you know, hurt their pride to be out with their dog in the rain or the sun. And they just stay outside and do stuff, right? They don't do much stuff, just kind of bum stuff, but they're still outside doing something all the time. And so that's the stage of training I'm at with Bella. I'm just out doing stuff, right? Now you'll notice that I'm not out here going sit or down or heel and trying to make her like look up at me while I'm walking around. No, I'm just out here doing what you know, a panhandler would do. I'm just walking around, I got my little thing here, and uh, you know, I might get me a little cardboard sign every once in a while. I got one that says, we'll train dogs for food. <laughs> and sometimes I'll stand out with that just to talk to people. You know, it just gets people to come up and talk to people. And Bella just has now gotten used to like a lot of different noises and smells and textures and all kinds of people. Because when you're at the Rural King, let me tell you, you see a whole lot of different kinds of people, you know. And that's what I love about, uh, about uh, you know, this area is that we have a lot of different things going on. So when I come up here, at any given time, there's going to be a trailer with a horse in it, or a trailer with 17 or 18 goats in it, you know? Uh, or there's going to be a blue healer standing on the back of a farrier's truck. I mean, you just never know. And so we just come up here and we kind of bum around, you know? Now, admittedly, I don't generally carry this bindle with me, but I thought it would be cool for the video. All right, but anyway, so that's where we are with uh, Bella. We're in our bum training stage, and uh, it's going really great. And uh, Bella's going home next weekend, and I'm going to try to teach her mom uh, to go out and uh, lead that bum life a bit. All right, guys, I'll see you all next week.